Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to talk about the diffraction of light. What is diffraction of light? Well, let's say we have a light beam that is incident on a plate of glass. So this is considered glass. Here we have air, glass, and let's say the light comes out on the other side. Now also notice that the light doesn't go into a straight line. When it enters the glass, it changes direction. It bends or refracts as we call it. That's what we call refraction. And then when it reaches the other side of the glass and then exits the glass and goes back into the air layer underneath it, then again it bends in the opposite direction. So here we can see that we have a line drawn across the boundary and this line is perpendicular or normal to the boundary. And you can see that when it enters the glass, it bends towards the normal as we call it. The angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. The refracted angle is smaller. And on the other side, as it reaches the boundary of the glass to the air, it bends away from the normal. Here's the line that's perpendicular to the boundary, and the light has a smaller angle here and a greater angle there. It bends away from the normal. It refracts again. Well, the index of refraction, and every material has what we call an index of refraction. Space or air has an index of refraction we call one. Here again, on the other side, n equals 1. We use a small letter n for indication of index of refraction. But the index of refraction of glass is greater, like for example, about 1.5. And when light moves from an index of refraction that's smaller to an index of refraction that's greater, it will bend towards the normal. It will change direction. And likewise, when it moves from a region where the index of refraction is greater, to a region where the index of refraction is smaller, it will bend away from the normal. And that property has enabled us to build lenses, and we use advantage, we take advantage of that situation. In addition to the light bending, something else happens to the light. Let's say that the typical light has a wavelength of about 500 nanometers. We know it's somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers. And we know that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, about 300,000 kilometers per second. When it enters glass, what happens to the wavelength? It actually becomes shorter. Instead of 500 nanometers, we take that number divided by the index of refraction, and we get the new wavelength. So wavelengths, as they enter the glass, so wavelengths will be longer, and then when they enter glass, they'll be shorter, and when it leaves the grass, they'll be longer again. So the wavelengths will change. Since the frequency of the light doesn't change, and remember that the speed of light equals the frequency times the wavelength, if the wavelength becomes smaller and the frequency stays the same, then the speed has to become smaller as well. And here you say, well, wait a minute. Isn't the speed of light always the speed of light? Yes, it is. But when light enters a region where the index of refraction is greater, it actually slows down. And the speed through the glass will be the speed of light, what it normally is, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the index of refraction, 1.5. So through the glass, it's only moving only, because it's still really fast, at 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And as soon as it leaves the glass, it speeds up again and reaches its normal speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. It does that rather quickly, gets right back up to speed. The wavelength goes right back to normal when it enters the air again on the other side. So the light, the wavelengths become smaller, the speed gets slower, and it changes direction upon entering a medium with an index of refraction that's greater than 1 when you go from air to that medium. Does the same when it enters water, crystals, anything else where water, where air, where not air, but where light can travel through, the, the uh, light rays will bend, the light will slow down, and the wavelengths will become shorter. Very interesting. In the next video, I will show you how we use this property to make lenses and why they work the way they do because of this special property of the refraction of light.